Welcome to our educational series on crystallography. Today, we'll delve into the fascinating world of unit cells and explore their various types. Let's get started. Unit cells are the simplest repeating units in a crystal lattice, much like the building blocks of a structure. Think of it as a blueprint that determines the entire crystal's properties. Each building block, or unit cell, when stacked in three dimensions, creates the entire crystal structure. You can check out the definition of a unit cell mentioned here. Consider the example of a salt crystal. As you can see in this figure, the structure of a sodium chloride crystal can be represented as a 3D grid of alternating sodium and chloride icons. A single sodium chloride pair, with a sodium and a chloride ion, is the unit cell. When this pair is repeated in all three dimensions, it forms the entire sodium chloride crystal. Unit cells are characterized by six parameters, the lengths of the three edges, A, B, and C, and the angles between them, alpha, beta, and gamma. These parameters define the shape and size of the unit cell. In crystals, atoms or ions arrange themselves in a repeating pattern. The smallest repeating unit of this pattern is called a unit cell. Each unit cell contains specific positions, called lattice points, where these atoms or ions can be found. As shown in the figure, the entire crystal structure is formed by the repeated arrangement of these unit cells in three dimensions. Understanding the different types of unit cells becomes crucial, as we explore materials science and engineering. These variations depend on two key factors, one, the arrangement of lattice points within the cell, and two, the overall geometrical shape of the cell itself. We have already discussed that, each atom, molecule or ion in a crystal lattice, is represented by a single point. These points are called lattice site or lattice point. Lattice sites or points are together joined by a straight line in a crystal lattice. As you can see here, these are the lattice points. Let us begin our investigation of crystal lattice structure with the most straightforward structure and the most basic unit cell. To visualize this, imagine taking a large number of identical spheres, such as tennis balls, and arranging them uniformly in a container, with each sphere directly above another, as illustrated in this figure. This arrangement is called simple cubic structure, and the unit cell is called the simple cubic unit cell, or primitive cubic unit cell. So, how efficient is this packing? Well, it turns out the spheres in a simple cubic structure leave a lot of empty space. In this arrangement, the spheres only fill about 52% of the container's volume. This loose packing makes simple cubic a bit inefficient for most materials. Interestingly, only one metal, polonium, naturally forms a simple cubic structure. Let's take a closer look at how the atoms arrange themselves. Notice how each sphere touches only four neighbors in its own layer, plus one directly above and one directly below. This pattern repeats throughout the entire crystal. This is an important concept. In any crystal structure, the number of other particles a single particle touches is called its coordination number. Because each polonium atom touches six other atoms in this arrangement, the coordination number for a simple cubic structure is six. In this simple cubic structure, the repeating pattern is a tiny cube. Imagine tiny boxes built around the centers of those spheres. See how the spheres at the corners touch each other. Because of that, the size of the edge of this unit cell is exactly twice the width of a single sphere. Now, each sphere sits right at the corner of eight unit cells. But think about it. That sphere belongs to all eight boxes, right? So, only a tiny part of that sphere actually belongs inside this specific unit cell. That's why we only count one-eighth of a sphere for each corner of the unit cell. But there are eight corners, each with one-eighth of a sphere. So if we add them all up, we get one whole sphere. So, we can say that there's just one complete sphere inside each simple cubic unit cell. Now, let's move on from the simple cubic structure to something a bit more crowded, the body-centered cubic or BCC structure. 
Imagine taking that simple cubic unit cell and placing another sphere right in the center. That's the key difference in BCC. See how there's an atom in the center of the cube, along with atoms at each corner. Unlike the simple cubic structure, these corner atoms don't quite touch each other. But they do touch the center sphere. Because of this central atom, a body-centered cubic cell actually counts as two whole atoms. We get one atom's worth from the eight corners, one eighth each, and then the whole atom in the center. So, each atom in a body-centered cubic structure has more neighbors. In fact, an atom in BCC touches four neighbors above it and four neighbors below it, for a total coordination number of eight. By adding that center sphere, BCC packing becomes way more efficient. In fact, BCC atoms fill up about 68% of the space, compared to only 52% for simple cubic. This efficient packing makes body-centered cubic a popular choice for some tough metals. Elements like potassium, barium, chromium, molybdenum, tungsten, and even iron, all crystallize in this body-centered cubic structure. Now, let's check out another way metals can pack their spheres. The face-centered cubic or FCC structure. Imagine taking our BCC unit cell and putting a sphere in the center of each face. That's the key difference in FCC. See how the corner spheres touch these new face-centered spheres diagonally. For each corner sphere, we only count one eighth because it belongs to eight unit cells. But on the faces, each sphere belongs to only two unit cells, so we count half an atom each. Adding it all up, we get one atom from the corners and three atoms from the faces, which adds up to a total of four atoms per unit cell. So, it can accommodate more atoms than BCC. In an FCC structure, the atoms fill up a whopping 74% of the space, compared to only 68% in BCC. That extra closeness makes the atoms super attracted to each other, which is why many metals, like aluminum, copper, and lead, use this FCC structure. There are actually other ways to arrange spheres besides simple cubic, BCC, and FCC. One less common arrangement is the base-centered or end-centered unit cell. Imagine taking a simple cubic unit cell and adding spheres to the center of two opposite faces. That's how we define the base-centered unit cell. It's not as common as the others we've seen, but it's still a possibility. So far, we've seen how atoms can pack themselves into different patterns within a tiny box called a unit cell. But did you know there are specific rules for how these unit cells can be arranged in 3D space? A French scientist named Auguste Brave figured out, there are 14 unique ways to arrange these unit cells like building blocks. These are called Brave lattices. Think of them as frameworks made of dots, where each dot represents an atom's location. These act as blueprints for different crystal structures. As you can see in this table, there are a total of 14 different Brave lattices, each with its own unique dot pattern. Some lattices have straight lines between dots, while others might have angles or even extra dots in the center. It all depends on how the atomic blueprint is arranged. These Brave lattices are the foundation for understanding how crystals are built. We've seen different ways to arrange atoms in a unit cell, but some ways are more space efficient than others. The simple cubic cell is like a basic apartment building with lots of empty space. But BCC and FCC structures pack the atoms in much tighter. Because of this tight packing, BCC and FCC structures have a packing efficiency around 68% and 74% respectively, compared to only 52% for the simple cubic cell. That extra squishiness translates to stronger bonds between the atoms. Now, stronger bonds mean higher melting points, boiling points, and even material hardness. The way atoms are packed can also affect how a material interacts with others. This plays a big role in things like solubility, which is how easily one material dissolves in another. 
So, understanding these different unit cells and their packing efficiencies isn't just crystal geekery. It unlocks valuable clues when it comes to figuring out how different materials behave. The more we know about their atomic packing arrangements, the better we can understand their properties and even design new materials with specific characteristics.